God. Well, oh god. Hey, what is going on, everybody? My name is Payne, and welcome back to another anime re anime review video. And this is uh, basically a very historical milestone here <laughs> uh, at uh, here on the channel. Not only is this the 60th video on the channel, in case anybody's been paying attention, but this is also the first Yuri review of a show. And uh, I I'm a little mixed about it right now, just looking at it that way. Apparently, I was so mixed about it that I decided before the recording, I decided to pick up a tomato and eat it. No, nah, just kidding. There's another reason for this. We're going to get into that later. Uh, but for anyone who already has seen the show I'm going to be talking about, anyone who has any idea, at the very least, of what the show is and know how long it is, uh, this is the first show in a while that I've reviewed where there's been multiple seasons. In this case, there have been three seasons, plus an OVA, plus a two-episode special, which I don't normally talk about that much. Normally, I talk about like just one 12-episode season of a show. But for some reason, by fate, like by absolute chance, I watched all of this show. Like, I have all the shows picked on a wheel, and I don't know how fate basically told me to watch this show. So, I'm assuming fate's also telling me to eat this tomato and review this show on my channel as well. So here is the one and the only Yuru Yuri. Yuru Yuri started off as a manga written by a creator known as Nomori, and was distributed by a magazine known as Comic Yuri Hime. They mainly specialize in Yuri manga, if anyone is interested in that shit. Uh, another anime adaptation that came out of comic Yuri Hime was Citrus, which the only opinion I can get is that Yuri Yuri's better. <laughs> um, but uh, as, of two, as of the making of this video since 2008, it currently has 16 volumes, and it follows a club at a middle school known as the Amusement Club. It has its own separate, like, house, like, right near the school, and it follows four main characters, the four main members of the amusement club. There are three childhood friends. The main character, Akari, uh, the airhead, Kyoko, who says some of the weirdest shit in the entire show. Uh, there are stuff that she would say that's along the lines of, like, one example I can think of. This isn't nothing that she said. I just had this stuck in my head. Uh, the 9-11 moon landing is an outside job. Weird shit like that. And then you have the voice of reason, Yui, who is someone who is trying to, like, calm the waters in, in, uh, in a certain situation. And then there's a fourth character known as Chinatsu, who originally went there because she wanted to join another club that she didn't know already disbanded. So she joined it, and freaking Kyoko fell in love with her because, I, I don't know, she looks like an anime character? I... That's the best I can do without spoiling anything. But yeah, also, Chinatsu is one of a couple of reasons why this show is labeled a quote-unquote Yuri anime. I don't know what I was doing with this hand. Uh, but there are a bunch of other characters as well, but to s simplify what they do in the entire series, it's a slice of life show, nothing happens. Uh, it is that they just do nothing productive with their time throughout the entire series or an amusement club. There's also other characters as well, such as the student council, who is upset with the fact that they don't do shit, led by the show's soon today, Ayano, uh, who is the who's a part of a running joke where she runs into the amusement park room calling out Kyoko by her full name. I actually found a video where there's a lot of examples. I'm going to link it down below. I'm also going to show five seconds. Here it is. Toshino Kyoko! 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 God, that is not annoying. And alongside Ayano on the student council, uh, there is Rise, who we only see like a couple of times throughout the entire series. What happens is, is that she's always seen with, I guess, the school's science teacher, because you know, it, I, it doesn't say what her occupation is. And she does all these experiments that about 95% of the time ends in explosions. And she's always there for it. She's always the victim. So she's always seen with her. She's always seen being blown up. And she's always seen what I later found out was whispering. Uh, I honest to God thought like, oh my God, the science teacher did something fucking bad to her. Because you see her move her mouth, but she doesn't say any words. It's very weird. I thought we we're going to see some supernatural element or something. Uh, but no, it's just that she's just very softly whispering. And it's so faint. It is so soft that you can't hear shit. You can't hear it. Other people in the student council also include Sakurako and Himawari, who are two frenemies who are fighting to get a vice president spot. 
And finally, there is Chitose, who is Ayano's right-hand man. It's weird that how she's not the vice president, although she's right next to the president the whole time, and is the most obvious reason why this show is a Yuri anime, as every time that she has a Yuri fantasy about two characters, because every freaking character in this is a girl, her nose bleeds a lot. There are times where it's nothing, and then there are times where it bleeds so much that about half the time it looks like someone killed her. It looked like she was the victim of a murder. Other characters that are seen in the show, as well as the student council and the amusement club, you have Akane, who is Akari's big sister. And the running joke around her is that she has an unhealthy obsession with Akari. Almost to the uh, only way I can compare it is to a hardcore otaku who has all these posters on his wall and a body pillow on his bed. And yes, I'm assuming it's a guy because... I, I don't care. There is Chizuru, who is uh, Chitose's twin sister, and the only way you can distinguish between either one is the eye color. Uh, compared to Chitose, who is like very soft and you don't see her get angry at all, Chizuru is the exact opposite. She's aggressive towards everybody and she doesn't give a shit who you are. Uh, and the final one is Tomoku, who is Chinatsu's older sister and is a friend of Akane, who is once again Akane's older sister. And it's a weird thing where Tomoku, Tomoko, is obsessed with Akane, who's obsessed with Akari. It, it's a weird thing, um, but I never really bothered diving into that. Uh, and now into the production process of the show. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> okay, I'm not doing that again. Dude, it's just like an apple. Don't eat the middle. I don't know why I tried for the middle. So the first two seasons were directed by a guy named Masahiko Oda, who directed other shows such as Saba Gebu, link to that down below, uh, Himoto Umaru-chan, and Gabriel Dropout. It was written by Takashi Aoshima, who also worked on the same stuff, and was made by a studio known as Doga Kobo. But well, while season three was being made, production for Yuru Yuri switched from Doga Kobo to TYO Animations, known today as Yumeta Animations. Uh, and both the director and the writer were switched from, uh, in the directing spot, Oda to Hiroyuki Hada, who is mainly known for writing storyboards, not really directing that much. Uh, this is his first, like, big-time directing role, and in the writer spot, uh, taking over for Aoshima is Machiko Yakote, who ended up working on shows such as Karakai Jozu no Takagi-san, link to that one down below. Uh, other shows such as Prison School and XXXholic. Uh, they started off making a 64-minute OVA known as Yuru Yuri Nachi Yachumi, which is basically just every other episode that you're, that came out of Yuru Yuri. It came out in November of 2014, and it's basically just the amusement club and the student council camping. And then there was a two-episode special uh, to raise the anticipation up for season three that came out in August of 2015. And then the eventual third season came out, which is 12 episodes long in October of 2015, for a total of 36 episodes in this entire series plus an OVA and a two-episode special. Currently, there is also a 10th anniversary OVA in the works made by a third studio known as Lay Deuce. Uh, this is how popular this show is, and you know this is also the first time in the last few years that we are getting any news about uh, any more Yuru Yuri stuff. Uh, there is also some uh, news that came out about a 10th anniversary manga special or a 10th anniversary event because it's been 10 years or... It may have already came and went. I don't know. I honest to God stopped paying attention. <laughs> but yeah, that is uh, the third studio. And as of the making of this video, they are, um, my best guess, still working on it. Now, going into the third season of Yuri Yuri, I knew that there was going to be some differences uh, regarding a few key points in the show, such as the animation, the characters, and the dialogue. And, and because I came into the third season of this show fairly recently, I knew probably what I was going to expect regarding a different studio making a show because... As of the making of this video, there is a show out right now that it made a different studio. Uh, it's made by a different studio, and that is One Punch Man. Season 1 was made by Madhouse, if I remember correctly, and then Season 2 was made by JC Staff. And I remember hearing people on Twitter especially talk about how, you know, before Season 2 even came out, that, you know, One Punch Man Season 2 is going to be shit. Uh, and then there were some people who were saying the same thing even, the sh even after the show came out. So when a different studio makes a show that's very popular, in this case also with Yuri Yuri, you're gonna have some mixed reactions as well. It's just, that's one thing that I had in my mind while I was watching this, when I found out that a different studio made this. Uh, so after watching the rest of season three, I was partly right. 
So for the first two seasons of Yuri Yuri, I'm going to call them Doga Kobo episodes just to, you know, make it easier on me. Relied mainly on over-the-top gags and experiments. Like uh, at the beginning of every, ep every episode where Akari is breaking the fourth wall speaking, to the viewer, and in some cases, completely vanishes after like the like the first five seconds of an episode. The beginning of a running joke where she doesn't show up at all because she's supposedly the main character. <laughs> it makes fun of the main character label. There's also some jokes regarding other characters such as Chinatsu's horrendous artistic ability, uh, where they were just, they would just be, they were so bad, like, I can't even describe how bad they are. You should really just watch the show to understand. And uh, once again, Chitose's constant nose bleeding. Uh, and the constant overreaction, and of course, Ayano always barging into the club's house, yelling out, Toshino Kyoko is her full name, two or three times an episode. And the Doga Kobo episodes were highlighted again by the crazy gags and the lack of Yuri undertones. But as the third season was made by a different studio, there was a different end result. First off, season three in the OVA and the two episode special, I'm gonna call them the TYO episodes to make it easier on myself again, uh, they were more calm than seasons one and two. Instead of relying on what made the show unique from other slice of life shows to begin with, TYO cut out most of it entirely, with the only remnants of it being not two or three times an episode, two or three times in that season, where, you know, there would be a, a bloody nose scene from Chitose or I know yelling out Kyoko's full name. That only happens two or three times in the entirety of season three. As that was going out the door, what was coming in was an increase in the Yuri scenes between numerous characters uh, in the show, even uh, for some characters that didn't get that much screen time, like Sakurako and Himawari, or uh, t more about Tomoko with her obsession with Akane for some reason, even though that wasn't really established that well in the first two seasons anyway, and was there as a comedic joke. Really had no purpose. Yeah, even though TYO changed the focal point of the show, which may be a turnoff to some of its original viewers who liked the show for what it had, they were able to keep the overall quality of the show intact. As for everything else during the transition, uh, the voice actors fortunately reprised their roles. It would have obviously been different for me, in my opinion, if they were different voice actors. But, uh, of course, they were excellent all throughout. The animation, albeit made by a different studio, actually looked like it wasn't tampered with at all. I mean, if you put in a side-by-side -side view of an episode from TYO, Season 3, and an episode from Doga Kobo, either Season 1 or Season 2, you can probably see a couple... Or uh, maybe a few differences, but nothing to really change my opinion on it. And for season three, compared to seasons one and two, the opening and ending were actually pretty dull, as you know, part of the identity of the Doga Koba episodes was the music. They were very jumpy, they were very entertaining. And I'm not saying that season three opening and ending was not jumpy and entertaining, but they just didn't go the extra mile with it. If you ask me, it really depends on who you ask if you if you want to know if the TYO episodes are any better or worse than the first two seasons. And if you ask me, the first two seasons were better, and here is why. When Doga Kobo made the show originally, it gave the show its identity. It's something that the manga couldn't give the show, but when it's adapted onto a screen, it gave it a different form of its identity. And with the large amount of success that it had, the identity that it adopted for the show had now become more or less iconic to anyone who watched it. The fourth wall breaks, uh, the gags, the, the Toshino Kyokos, and that ever famous scene of Kyoko in the tomato onesie, which explains why I'm eating a tomato right now. Uh, even if you've never seen the show before, you've seen the onesie. It's been referenced to no end and probably won't be for a while. But when the project goes to someone else, chances are that that person or that group of people will make the show into a different experience. Kind of the same thing with One Punch Man. You can argue that it's not, but you know, there are people who are saying still to this day, season two doesn't li uh, live up to season one. Season one is a in a completely different ballpark. But for me, I'm gonna have to say the same thing for Yuri Yuri. Season three did not live up to the hype that season one and two gave. Even though that's my opinion, it doesn't stop me from being a fan of the show nonetheless. And so, uh, because I want to keep up with the usual rating system uh, that I've had with this channel, I'm going to rate all of these in five separate categories, in five separate seasons. Starting with season one, I'm going to give Yuri Yuri season one an eight out of ten. 
I'm going to give Season 2 a 9 out of 10. Uh, for the OVA that came out that just has the amusement club and the student castle camping, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10 because that basically didn't bring anything to the table. Uh, I'm going to give the two-episode special an 8 out of 10, and I'm going to give Season 3 a 7 out of 10 to finish it off. And thank you guys for watching this video. If you like Yuri Yuri, if you like this review, hit the like button down below. If you want to see any reviews like this in the future, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down below as well. And if you want to see any videos that I made uh, in the past, there are videos on the screen in the description and also down below in my channel as well. And once again, my name is Payne. I'll see you in the next video.